Spirit and God, amen. <clears throat> Today is the third Sunday of the Blessed Month of Hathor. And we continue this theme around the Bible and the work of the Bible in our, in our lives. And today, this is third Sunday, we focus on taking up your cross and, and basically this, this reaction to the gospel, following him. <clears throat> and as a side, <clears throat> the gospel teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ is not something that's boring or something that's mundane. It's something that's powerful and life-giving. And since it is dynamic, and since it's filled with the Spirit and it's powerful, we should have a reaction to the word of the gospel in our hearts. And our reaction should be this inward look at ourselves and a positive look towards the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we'll come back to that later. So why should we be brutally honest with ourselves? <clears throat> why should we look inward? It might be a strange thing, a strange thing to say. Unfortunately, we live in a society that coddles everything. <clears throat> and the problem is that sometimes this coddling leads us to become prideful and self-sufficient. And if we become prideful and self-sufficient, we're under this delusion that we have no need of God in our lives. We fall into this impression that we have nothing to learn. And we certainly don't need to waste our time developing a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ and his saints. We begin to have faith in ourselves. <clears throat> and we trust our opinions as good and trustworthy and important. <clears throat> so this is why it's important for us to have this inward look with ourselves, this brutally honest look within ourselves. And this look inward can lead us to repentance, to have a humble spirit that can lead us to be at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. But to today's society is, is bred on pride. <clears throat> and this pride has infected nearly every aspect of life. Behaviors and actions and works that ought to be shameful are a point of pride. And our society has even go so far as to condone and to celebrate those awful and shameful things. I'm not going to go into detail about that. That's not the point of today's gospel. But <clears throat> the opposite has happened in our society as well. The greatest wisdom ever given to the world, the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, has become taboo. And we ourselves become ashamed of our Lord and his words. We have our insecurities. We're afraid to stand up for our faith, and we're afraid to stand up to our, to our beliefs. And so the world is completely upside down. What should bring us confidence and joy instead brings us insecurities, and we are silent in the midst of those who hate our God, and hate our way of life. And we're not ashamed of the things of this world and its corruption and its false teachings and the ways that lead to spiritual death. Our Lord says, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What can a man give in return for his soul? So the gospel forces us to pick a side. It forces us to change our very way of life, fundamentally. It never allows one to be static in life. <clears throat> Either you are living faithfully or faithlessly, although there are different spectrums of faithfulness. So if you hear something that you don't like, understand that one of the goals of a sermon, for example, is to bring the gospel to life and to activate it in your heart. So the sermon is not meant to pick on anyone. It's not meant to have that moment where you're listening to a sermon and you nudge the person next to you and saying, listen, this is for you. It's not meant to attack. It's meant to expose our darkness, yours and mine. And it exposed our darkness to the light of the Christian truth. 
when we've been in dark for a long time and someone shines a light on us and our face, we squint. We kind of draw back. We, we draw away from that light. <clears throat> we have this perception that the light is awful and the light is terrible and even painful. If you've ever been to a, a daytime movie and you've been in the dark for so long and then you walk out and it's still daytime, you, you, have, to, you have this reaction. It hurts to be outside. <clears throat> But this is not the case. It's only our perception because we've been in darkness for so long. We've kind of grown accustomed to it. And we have not regularly been exposed to the light. And that's how it is when we read and we study the scripture. And we, we listen to different sermons that are based on the, on the gospels. <clears throat> when we become accustomed to the word of God we become transformed and changed by this exposure to the light. Today, we live very, fairly comfortable lives. We have what we need and then some. And we are entertained and informed, I think, nearly you know, 24 hours a day if we wanted it. <clears throat> and on this note, it's important for us to say that we need to be vigilant with our own senses and with our children and the media and the screen time that they consume. It's not the talk for today. But it not only affects their psychology and development, but it also imprints something on their souls. So balance and moderation are necessary. But that's not the talk for today. We live very comfortable, and I would say, I would argue, even wealthy lives. We have so much. And yet, according to our Lord Jesus Christ, if we don't have his teachings in our lives, we're really empty. And more than this, we're dead. As Christians, we are called to live radical lives that will not look anything like the radicals that you see in the news. None of that nonsense. A radical way of the Christian life is the way of obedience to the teachings of Christ and this radical way to love. When we live this radical love, we will probably be attacked and misunderstood. But that is precisely our cross in this world. Our Lord says in the gospel today, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And who does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. In other words, a true disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ will love me to the degree that all other loves come secondary. What are we willing to compromise in order to be comfortable or safe in this world? On the other hand, what are we willing to sacrifice in this world in order to be comfortable in the presence of God and his angels and his saints? Because we can't escape that reality. One day, we will meet God. We will be in his presence. So we have some important questions to look inward. The gospel today provokes us. We should have a reaction. We should look inward. We should ask ourselves, what are we willing to deny in hoping to, to know our Lord more intimately? Will we deny ourselves some time that we spend on social media or Netflix or things like that? <clears throat> Will we deny ourselves some time that we spend socializing or playing games? Will we deny ourselves some of the time that we spend on working on our projects and taking on additional work. The time and attention that we have are finite. What, what might happen to us if we dedicate some of these finite resources to the infinite God? Time and energy is given to us as a great and precious gift. How will we answer for these gifts and how will we redeem these gifts? In our Lord's gospel today, he says, And whoever does not bear his cross 
and come after me cannot be my disciple. One of the Eastern Fathers, St. Nikolai, he says, what does it mean to take up your cross? It means the willing acceptance at the hand of providence of every means of healing that is offered, bitter though it may be. Do great catastrophes fall on you? Be obedient to God's will as Noah was. Is sacrifice demanded of you? Give yourself into God's hands with the same faith as Abraham had when he went to sacrifice his son. Is your property ruined? Do your children die suddenly? Suffer it with all patience, cleaving to God in your heart as Job did. Do your friends forsake you? And do you find yourself surrounded by enemies? Bear it with, without grumbling, as with faith that God's help is at hand as the apostles did. In other words, we should have a reaction to the words of the gospel. It should stir in our hearts. And this reaction should be this inward look into ourselves and a positive te- look at the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's put that into practice. <clears throat> let's see this next part of the gospel from today in Luke chapter 14, and let's see if we have this inward look. Our Lord says, salt is good, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Pay attention. Does this, do these two verses have an impact in our lives? Let's unpack it. Hopefully we have this inward look at ourselves. We have this reaction. Salt is good for three things. It's good for seasoning. It's good for healing. And it's good for the creation of thirst. Salt can be a delicious seasoning. Just as an honest Christian, a true disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ, can be the spice of life. True Christians... Honest Christians, disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, they love deeper. They work harder. They cry better. They laugh longer. They forgive quicker. They sleep sounder. They wake up happier. They offend less. They praise more. They fast regularly. They feast often. They praise daily and they pray continually. Honest Christians, true disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, make the most loving spouses, the most diligent employees, the most successful parents, and they make the most honorable children. So salt is good for seasoning, the spice of life. Salt is good for healing, Thousands of years before we had any kind of like rubbing alcohol or things like that, people would put salt into the wounds to disinfect them. They would clean the wounds that way, and they would bring about healing. But it hurts, stings. Honest Christians, true disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, are like this. They're like this salt. Just like ancient physicians would lovingly pour salt On an infected wound, an honest disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ pours scripture in a sinful situation. They don't keep quiet and let sin fester, causing even bigger damage. No, a true Christian, an honest disciple, confronts sinners with their sin, showing them how their actions compare with God's commands in the scripture. And it stings. It hurts. And if the person listens and repents from their sin, then that spiritual wound can finally begin to heal. Do you confront yourself with your own sin? Do you have that inward look? Do we apply scripture 
to bring about repentance in order to bring healing. It stings, but salt is good for healing. Salt creates thirst. If you eat some salty food, <coughs> it won't be long before you're looking for a nice, thirst-quenching glass of water. And likewise, an honest Christian, a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ, creates a thirst for Christ. When people are around an honest Christian, not like me, when they're around an honest Christian, it isn't long before some of them will be seeking the living water of Christ. When people see you living in true joy, in happiness, in peace, in forgiveness, in holiness, and in love, they want to know how they can experience the same thing that you have. So you have to look inward. Do others thirst for Christ because they know you? Do others thirst for Christ because they know you? Our Lord said, it is possible for salt to lose its flavor. Ancient Israel did not use the same sort of table salt that we have today. It was actually a mixture of like various substances. Some of those substances were salts and some had no flavor. And as long as the mixture was truly salty, it was good for seasoning, it was good for healing, and it was good for the creation of thirst. But if the salt leached out of the mixture, what was left behind was this flavorless, worthless thing. The Lord said it was good for nothing. Good for nothing. Sadly, many Christians have lost their saltiness. Instead of being holy, they act just like the world. They watch the same shows. They laugh the same jokes. They have the same friends, the same acquaintances. They practice the same immorality. They no longer season the world by being like Christ. They no longer cause a sting to the sinfulness of their family and their friends. They don't bring healing according to the word of God. And they don't create a thirst for Christ because they're nothing like Christ. Christians who do not act like Christ are just as worthless as salt that isn't salty. But thankfully, the Holy Spirit is able to make us salty again. All we have to do is repent. And we truly live our lives according to the scripture and according to the teachings of the church. Asking for forgiveness, running to confession, obeying our Lord Jesus Christ in every area of your life, even when it stings. Then, then we can bring back that flavor. We can be the salt of the earth. So to conclude, the scripture needs to have, we need to have a reaction when we listen to the scripture. We can't just brush by these verses as if they're like, nice things that we put on calligraphy and put on the walls. The month, this, this month of Hatur reminds us that the scripture is life-giving and powerful. And it should prick our hearts. We should have a reaction. We should contemplate. We should slow down a little bit. And it's tied to this fasting period that we're in. We started fasting on, on Friday. The day after Thanksgiving, no excuses. Sometimes people, you know, Thanksgiving becomes a big uh, controversial day in terms of the fast. But it came the day after. Fish is allowed. But the fasting period, this month of Hatur, reminds us to detach a little bit from this world. Do we love Christ more than all these things? Do all other loves come secondary to Christ? Can we give up anything? Anything. Work with your father confession. Can you give up anything? Anything. 
We focus heavily on food, and it's good. It's important. But can we give up anything? If the Lord asked you to give up something, anything, would you do it? Video games? Listening to a type of music? A certain friend? So-called friend? Uh, a, a bad relationship? Could it be your favorite food? Or time with friends over going to church? Try giving it up once without him even asking. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to see how much you love him. St. Basil the Great said, Whoever would truly be a follower of God must break the bonds of attachment to this life. This is done through complete separation from and forgetfulness of old habits. It is impossible for us to achieve our goal of pleasing God unless we snatch ourselves away from fleshly ties and the worldly society. The apostles, the saints, left all and followed Christ, left the houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, lands and persecution. What have I given up for Christ? What can I give up for Christ is the better question. We pray that God accepts our, our efforts in this fast. We pray that we can truly be a disciple of God, not loving people or things more than him, not making excuses, that we can bear the cross, denying ourselves and forsaking all to really live for God. And glory be to God forever. Amen.